I think the, the most common things we're seeing with regard to advancement and diagnosis of atopic dermatitis in dogs go back to our improved understanding of how it's caused. Um, 30 some years ago when I was starting up, we knew that atopic dermatitis occurred, but we were very focused on one aspect, and that's the allergic antibody, IgE. And that is the basis of our diagnostic tests, whether we skin test dogs or whether we um, serum test dogs. But what we've learned is that the disease is so much more than just the IgE. There are, uh, the immune system is deranged, so it is abnormal. Dogs react to things that don't matter. Pollens aren't really dangerous to the body, but, but that, those are some of the things that dogs react to. So as a consequence of that, I think we've, we've learned as far as diagnosis that there are certain criteria we use to make us suspicious. We don't really have a diagnostic test, but we look at features in the dog's background. Is it the right breed? Did the itch develop before three years of age? We know that that happens. The feet are almost always involved. Um, dogs have redness around the eyes, the muzzle, the feet, the belly, the armpits. And they usually, unless they have coexisting flea allergy, the back of their body is usually normal. So this is a disease that affects kind of the face and the ventral part of the body. So we diagnose atopic dermatitis based on this history and clinical signs, but we always have to rule out other causes of itch. So we recommend treating for ectoparasites like fleas and scabies, and consider food allergy if these are dogs that are itchy year round. So those are the things we're looking at and then when we, we control ectoparasites and infections and we figure out whether the dog has food triggers or not, then we're left with the diagnosis of atopic dermatitis which is a lifelong disease so we have to have a good way to manage it.